untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-black puppet stitcher deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the 3 mana 2-3 human wizard at Mythic, saying whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token with decayed, and a decayed zombie cannot block, and when it attacks we have to sacrifice it at the end of combat. Then at the beginning of our upkeep, if we control three or more creature tokens, we may transform a Puppet Stitcher into Puppet Factory, an artifact saying creature tokens we control lose all abilities and have base, power and toughness 3-3. So all of a sudden those decayed zombies can block and we can attack with them without having to sacrifice them afterwards. And then at the beginning of our upkeep, we may transform Puppet Factory back into Puppet Stitcher if we maybe have additional instants and sorceries we want to cast to make more zombie tokens. So Puppet Stitcher, a very powerful payoff card for any deck that can generate lots of tokens, which the Sanchmore Witch is also very good at, a 3 mana 3-2 three human warlock with menace and wards, which makes the opponent pay 3 life if they want to target the Sanchmore Witch. And then Magecraft says whenever we cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, create a 1 1 black and green past creature token that when it dies it gains one life. So if we can have an active Sanchmore Witch alongside Puppet Stitcher that eventually turns into Puppet Factory, we can have this unstoppable army of 3 3 past tokens and zombies that keeps on replenishing. So that's the goal of the deck. Now if we cast our Puppet Stitcher or Sanchmore Witch on curve, the opponent is very likely to remove them on sight. They don't have any Enter the Battlefield abilities outside of the Witch requiring 3 life for the opponent, but they don't really leave an immediate board presence behind if they're dealt with. So the main problem is tapping out for these on turn 3 and having the opponent remove them. So the solution for that is to either wait until after turn 3 so we can protect them with counter spells, which is one viable solution. The other option is to play discard spells. So we've got four main deck copies of Duress, which lets us take a look at the opponent's hand and then we get to take away a non-creature non-land card from their hand. And then we also have the full playset of Check for Traps, a 2 mana sorcery that lets the opponent reveal their hand, and then we choose a non-land card from it, exile that card. If it was an instant or card with flash, the opponent loses one life, otherwise we lose one life. So these are 8 ways for us to take away removal spells, to hopefully clear a path for Puppet Stitcher and Sanchmore Witch, so we can potentially tap out for them on turn 3. Otherwise, we can wait until turn 4 to keep up Malachi Rebirth, a 1 mana instance saying choose target creature, we lose 2 life, and until end of turn that creature gains when this creature dies, return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control, so that can save one of our key creatures from removal or a sweeper effect that we weren't able to take with a discard spell. And we also have the flexibility of playing Rebirth as Malakir Meyer, a land that comes into play tapped. And then the rest of our deck is filled to the brim with cheap instants and sorceries to enable the Puppet Stitcher and Sanchmore Witch. One card that I really wanted to try in this deck is Alrin's Epiphany, which also has a ton of inherent synergy. But at 6 or 7 mana it's just a little bit too expensive, whereas we're trying to keep the curve low in this deck so we can trade off resources on the cheap and eventually pull ahead with our 3 mana creatures. So we can get away with only playing 20 lands plus the 4 copies of Malachi Rebirth. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, at 1 mana we've got the full playset of Consider as a nice cheap cantrip letting us take a look at the top card of our library. If we don't like it we can put it into our graveyard and then draw a card. Typically want to hold this until after we play Puppet Stitcher or Sedgemore Witch. Then we've got the full playset of Blood Chief's Thirst, killing a creature with mana value 2 or less. Can also kick it for an additional 2 and a black, in which case we can kill any creature or planeswalker. Then we've got our full playset of Duress, Rebirth and Check for Traps as well as the full playset of Deadly Dispute, a 2 mana instant, as an additional cost to cast it we have to sacrifice an artifact or creature, can often wait to potentially chum block an opposing creature with one of our pest tokens to soak up a bit of damage and then sacrifice it to the dispute and then we get to draw 2 cards and generate a treasure token which we can sacrifice to add 1 mana of any color to our mana pool which is useful for potentially casting our 3 mana creature and multiple instants and sorceries in the same turn so we can get immediate value value. Then the full play set of Hunt for Specimens, which generates a 1-1 pest token, and we also get to learn, meaning we can grab one of our sideboard lessons, including environmental sciences, which lets us search for basic lands and gain two. 
Teachings of the Archaics, which lets us draw two cards, potentially multiple cards, if the opponent has more cards in hand than we do. Necrotic Fumes, which requires us to exile a creature we control to exile target creature or planeswalker. Two copies of Pest Summoning to generate a pair of Pest Tokens. Introduction to Prophecy for more card draw. And finally Mascot Exhibition, if the game drags out as a 7 mana token generator. And then at 2 mana we've got additional removal with Infernal Grasp, destroying target creature at the cost of 2 life at instant speed. And then we've got our 3 mana creatures. And then the mana base is very straightforward, all 8 dual lands in blue-black with a new Shipwreck Marsh and the blue-black pathway, 5 basic swamps, 5 basic islands, and 2 copies of Hive of the Eye Tyrant as a creature land that can turn into a 3-3 menace that exiles cards from the opponent's graveyard. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Could use an extra land or token maker to sack to the dispute to kick things off. Could also wait a turn on the rest, but if we draw one of our two drops then I might want it. And uh, okay, opponent's on a party deck, no removal at least that we can see. And then, do I kill the Sentinel now? I think I do. It's a party creature, can help them ramp, and uh, if I draw a land I'm gonna tap out for a creature anyway. Uh, hunt for specimens, can get sciences. Still hoping to draw a third land naturally so we can sciences on the following turn and then play dispute afterwards. Right, that one comes into play tapped unfortunately, so yeah I think we just play hive and sciences for land or I could dispute. Yeah, I guess the speed might actually be better, because then I make the treasure, next turn I can play a 3-drop and uh, a 2-drop afterwards. Assuming we can draw land here. So, not the fastest start, but... Not super far behind on board, at least. So how about... Sedgemore Witch, and then just kill one of the Paragons. And then next turn, play another 3-drop plus Sciences, hit my land drop. Take 3. Considers good too. So I think it's time for Stitcher. And then Sciences will have to get an Islands if I want to consider. And we can hit with the witch. And there's a commander. At least no full party yet. Archpriest attacks. It is tempting to double block with my pests. We would still have enough to make a Puppet Factory next turn. And it does take away a potentially important creature type. And then Hunt for Specimens we can keep.
I don't have to transform Puppet Stitcher, but I think I will. And then just go Witch into Hunt for Specimens. And then we should be just fine in terms of 3-3 three, three creatures. Could get Necrotic Fumes, could get Pass Summoning. Just try to go over the top. And then start attacking. Opponent happy to trade. Another commander. Does buy them some time. So, what's my play here? Can play Witch and Dispute or Pass Summoning Dispute? Let's play Witch. And then, do we attack with everyone? I think so. And then I could dispute One of these that's getting blocked, maybe. And even if for some reason the Puppet Factory is gone, we should still be in fine shape. So, might as well check for traps. And we'll completely clean them out here. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with the fine hands. No three mana creature in sight, but there's a puppet stitcher, and double consider plus dispute sacking the pest would have given us a ton of card draw to find one. Turn to innkeeper in black green, there's such more witch. So I'm probably going to be forced to consider to try and find an extra land here. Double Innkeeper. And we'll take one. And sadly, you got a Graveyard Witch to find a land, which we did. Will try and sacking innkeeper draw two, so they do have a bit of a sacrifice angle to it as well. Well, I can tap out for Senchmore Witch. Haven't been able to look at the opponent's hand yet, but we do have a backup three mana creature. If they answered the witch, we can play Stitcher next turn and start making tokens right away. So I think it's worth it. And at least if they target the witch, they will have to pay the three life. A run and seven. All right, it's a new planeswalker. Can answer the tree folk token with blood chief's thirst, and then the witch can finish off the planeswalker. Seems like a pretty good deal. And then, yeah, I'll play the. Stitcher 2. 
Seems like they're holding a villa trying, so they will get a bit of value as we try and kill the tree folk. And there it is. At least it cost them a treasure token. Well, hopefully there's no sweeper incoming. Hunt for specimens into necrotic fumes can exile one of our creatures here. And it's going to be the puppet stitcher. Alright, now we finally get to check for traps. They've got Dispute, Ghast, and Hunt. Probably take the Hunt, which can maybe get another Necrotic Fumes. And then what to get with Hunt for Specimens is also a tricky question. Could get a card draw effect, although teachings probably not going to work out too well for me since the opponent can empty their hand and Dispute is going to make it difficult for me to keep my hand empty. So maybe I get Introduction to Prophecy to go looking for another Puppet Stitcher instead. There's no real need for removal. Yeah, well, let's get the Introduction. And then we can hit... Don't want to attack with a zombie yet. We can maybe sack it to Dispute, or if we do find Stitcher, it'll turn into a 3-3 eventually. Shambling Ghast makes treasure. Another one. Alright. Now I don't hate Sedgemore Witch. Attack with a bunch of pests. And then I can Deadly Dispute potentially. Don't want to attack with a Witch because they can double block and... I don't want to lose the witch here. This seems okay. Opponent takes it. And I think I main phase dispute in case we find a duress and the opponent is holding some scary card we want to take away. And then maybe I should get rid of the zombie now. Could have also attacked with a zombie and sacrificed it before the uh, decay trigger makes a sacrifice a zombie. But yeah, this seems good. Next turn, can play Puppet Stitcher and hopefully transform it into the Puppet Factory. Opponent stays back. So, could try and look for another discard spell. To try and save the Puppet Stitcher, should they have another removal spell. Although the highest upside play is going Stitcher first. And from the looks of it, it's not like they seem to have any spot removal in hand. So Duress would be probably the best card we can find here. Another Witch as backup isn't bad. Alright, at this point, let's see, they can animate Faceless Haven. Yeah, I think I'm still okay attacking with everyone. Still have enough leftover tokens to kill the opponent if Stitcher survives. Also could have... Try to attack with Infernal Grasp, still available to kill the Haven. But if I trade Witch for Haven, I'm pretty happy. Alright, so opponent does try to set up some blocks here. Witch has Menace, so they have to double block. That's fine.
also could have cast a consider before the witch died here to make an extra pest on the way out, but if Stitcher lives, we're already winning by a lot. So there's no need for it, so I might need to keep consider to rebuild with a backup Sedgemore Witch, should there be a sweeper here. But our opponent explodes next turn, get a nice puppet factory, and seven, eight tokens, plus we could make two more with consider here, is plenty enough for lethal. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hands. Could use a discard spell to check if the coast is clear. But hunt into deadly disputes, a good sequence, and now check for traps. I think we have enough spells to trigger Stitcher that I want to consider turn one to hit my land drop. Otherwise, things could get kind of messy. Plenty of lands now, so let's check for traps. And hopefully we get to play Stitcher on three. So a bit of a werewolf deck as we see here. We'll take the thirsts. And yeah, unless they top deck with their next two draw steps, Stitcher should survive. And next turn we get to make quite a few tokens already. Arlen, not bad. We must stop the knights from days. Our deck is pretty good at switching back to daytime since we can easily cast two spells in the same turn. So for now, could Infernal Grasp one of the wolves attack Arlen? Or attack Arlen, see if they double block. Don't know what's better here. Sure. Then we'll check for traps before it's too late. And take a binding. Alright, that worked out. And then next turn we get to make a ton more tokens, hopefully. Wait for the perfect moment to strike. Liberator is kind of an issue since it can destroy my puppet factory once we transform it. So we will need to deal with that. Although Hunt could get Necrotic Fumes. Yeah, interesting spot. Yeah, let's hunt for Necrotic Fumes and then maybe wait an extra turn on transforming the Puppet Stitcher to make a couple extra tokens. Can also exile planeswalkers with fumes, but opponent can village rights. And then now I could also finish off Arlen by sending two zombies at her. Which is probably worthwhile. Alright, so as the dust settles, still have a puppet stitcher. And hopefully get to make a couple more tokens. Can go hunt into a pass summoning, for instance. Moonrise turns to nighttime.
but our opponent casts two spells, so it switches back to day. Second hunt. Get pass summoning. And then I can attack with my decayed zombie, which we're planning to sacrifice to a deadly dispute anyway. And I can do that after damage. Still keep Stitcher back, just in case. Need to go full control to sack my zombie before the decay trigger resolves. And then, thanks to the treasure, we can still pass summoning. Okay, and then... Yeah, hopefully this is enough to survive and then next turn get our factory going. And I'll put a stop on upkeep to consider before transforming too. They can still get quite a bit of trample damage in, so we might have to block with a few pests. So nine points of trample. So all four pests need to block. And then at that point maybe block the adversary. Although if we block the Lord, we prevent the card draw. So maybe that's better. We'll gain a bunch of life in the process. Fair enough. So not enough zombies to transform anymore. This triggers beginning of upkeep, but it's already too late for that, just to show you here. Can still put that in graveyard. Alright. Should be able to recover. So we can hunt for... Let's see here. Also don't mind getting sciences, just for the life gain essentially. And then we can sciences hunt for mascot exhibition. And this can attack. Is it finally time for the factory? Looks like it. No, baleful mastery exiling the puppet stitcher. Can't have any fun. And the rest a little late to the party. So is our opponent dead here? 12, 13, 14? Not quite. If we kill the Hound Tamer. So I guess that means Duress plus Mascot Exhibition instead. Could still attack with a bunch of creatures here. But I can wait one more turn, I think. Turns to night time. And double thirsts should do it. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. 
got a bit of discard. No token to go with a dispute yet. And then two removal spells, so lots of interaction. I think we keep. Just gonna hope to pick up either a token maker or one of our three mana creatures plus a land. Alright, there's a creature. And then probably want to check for traps to be more mana efficient. Opponent on blue-red giants. So... What do we want to take away here? Squash and Prismari Command are removal spells. Plus they have a counter spell, although if we draw a land I could resolve the Stitcher before they can counter it. And at that point... Squash is probably the scariest card which can deal with the Stitcher. So it's a tough call. Next turn the opponent's play is going to be Foretell Sodcoming. Which is a card I can no longer take with Duress afterwards. So if we really want to hamper the opponent's next turn, I guess taking the uh, counter spell is best. Alright. And it's not like they have a giant in play that lets them cast Squash on the cheap. So I think I'm confident in resolving this Puppet Stitcher now that we drew the land. Okay, kick things off with Duress. They could cast the Prismari Command in response to maybe cycle it, or they could let me take it. Alright, commands dealing two, making a treasure in response. Oh, that's fine. Double squash in hand, fair enough. And then could deadly dispute here, sacking the zombie token to keep the cards flowing. And hunts. So that already lets us transform Stitcher into Factory. And at that point I think I want to make more tokens, so pass summoning seems fine. So they've got one turn to answer the Stitcher. Which I guess they can if they just cast Squash for 5 mana. But they go for Calamity Bearer instead. Alright, transform. And then, yeah, we can grasp the Calamity Bearer. Attack. And pass summoning. Probably wanted to put a stop on upkeep so we could have cast the uh, Infernal Grasp in response to the Puppet Stitcher transformation trigger to get one extra decayed zombie. Something else to keep in mind. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a hand that's missing a creature as well as maybe a token maker for dispute. So I don't love it. This is better. Sadly, I have to put a card on the bottom. Might be the consider or the dispute. Now let's go with the Dispute. Might be a little clunky to cast if we don't have Consider to play first. And then we have to decide whether or not we play Rebirth tapped, or if we save it. I think I play tapped here since we're low on resources. Probably gonna be too difficult to keep it up. Turn 1 Blind Blade could imply a Death Touch Synergy deck. Don't need to kill it with the Thirst just yet. We can maybe wait until we can make a token with it. Warmaster? Alright, I guess it's more of an Elf deck. Alright, opponent gets to make some tokens, but I'll get to make some tokens in the process too. Stitcher has a better block on the Warmaster. Although it's the more valuable of my two creatures. With that being said, I only have a single island, so that could be a bottleneck if I want to also cast Consider in the same turn. 
So I think that's the tiebreaker here. Take one. And Harald, king of Skemfar. Makes a token. And finds Finn the Fangbear, so they do have a bit of Death Touch synergy. They might be playing with Binding the Old Gods, which can also give the team Death Touch and combo with Finn. So that's a reason to duress here. Instead of killing the Warmaster, so I could go Witch into duress. To maybe take a Binding. Yeah, sure. No binding, but at least we know the coast is clear. And I guess eventually Warmaster can also give the team Death Touch to uh, power up Finn. Next turn we get to make a whole bunch of tokens. Still probably okay to trade for the Blind Blade and the Pests. Since the Death Touch Blind Blade would still trade for a 3-3 token anyway. Okay, well, we get to combo off here. Don't need Swamp. So what do we want to kill? Could just kill both Death Touch creatures. Do have to watch out for Shesra as well. Which uh, can force me to block with a creature. Although if I can... let's see... Yeah, I guess there's no easy way to attack with a Puppet Stitcher without it trading. I could kill the two Death Touch creatures and then... It can still force me to block with Stitcher and attack with Harald. But so be it. So hopefully no fourth lands. There it is. So they can trade Harald for Stitcher here and prevent us getting a Puppet Factory. And rebirth a turn late. So now what? I guess attack with Hive. They can trade for a couple tokens. It's not ideal. Sadly cannot Hive and Witch attack and keep up rebirth. And if the Witch attacks they just trade for two one ones. So don't really have any good attacks. So we'll pass. So sadly the game's gonna drag on. Do have a nice army of tokens, but don't want to attack with our decayed zombies and the pests would we'll just uh, get eaten alive. So the game drags on. There's the binding we were talking about. We'll let them pay the wards and then a rebirth to save the witch. Let's see if we can find another Stitcher. Another Witch is tempting. Although it doesn't really help much. Stitcher would be much, much better here. Let's see what they're working with. Double Heralds and Tainted Adversary. Yeah, I guess we take Harald still. Just don't have any good attacks, unfortunately.
So now we're just waiting for the Warmaster to eventually activate and pump the elves. And for specimens, can get teachings to draw to. Or we could necrotic fumes and exile. Probably the Warmaster at this point, although there's still two lands away from activating it. Yeah, let's just uh, keep digging for Stitcher. Their team has Death Touch. We're almost getting to the point where we could make a big attack with her opponent at 13. Now 12. Still have our hive. We can turn into a creature. Double Infernal Grasp. So I can kill Warmaster, I can kill either Shesra or Harald. So maybe Warmaster and Harald, which can attack us back for more since we'll also take a bunch of damage here. Has my opponent taking seven, down to three. So we should be able to finish them off with our remaining pests. Especially once we consider Hive. too much here. Alright, the game ended up being a lot grindier than expected. Sadly didn't get to make a factory, but uh, still GG's. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Got our two win conditions, bit of interaction. Facing turn one eye twitch. Could be like a black-white sacrifice control deck, in which case I'm gonna need Malachi Rebirth. So, yeah, let's hang on to it. Looks like Mardu colors instead. White, black, and red. So... Could wait until turn 4 to play my creature with Rebirth up, or could lead with the Witch and then if they answer the Witch that's okay. Lane, so could see Goldspan Dragon in our future too. Think I don't have the time to do nothing here, so we'll play the Witch. And then next turn, Stitcher with either Consider or Rebirth available. Although if Goldspan shows up, we might have to kick Bloodchief's Thirst instead. Goldspan's also one of the main reasons why we're playing Infernal Grasp times 4 over Power Board Kill, which does not target dragons. Yeah, opponent just passing the turn instead, not even attacking with Eye Twitch. So not sure what's up with that. 
I guess they wanted to block the Senchmore Witch. Checks out. Well, get to play Stitcher and then uh, hopefully ride our creatures to victory. Put a stop on upkeep as well. Just in case, although don't expect to cast anything there, as we won't have the three tokens required to transform the Stitcher yet. Dispute sacking Eye Twitch could get all sorts of lessons, including removal. Just the sciences. Which gets another swamp. And showdown of the skulls. Alright. Opponent going for a card draw. Finds a couple Fireblade Chargers, and I see. Extus slash Awaken the Blood Avatar are pretty good with these small creatures they can sacrifice. Consider. Another witch, I'll take it. And a backup rebirth. So, yeah, let's pass it back. Double rebirth and consider available. Now, stop an upkeep in case I can make another zombie before making factory. Charger can also put counter on Charger if they're planning to sacrifice it. Instead of making a large Kalein. And there's Extus. So not going for Awaken the Blood Avatar. Fair enough. Another witch. Hmm. At this point, I might want more instants and sorceries. That works. And then do I just rebirth to make a couple three threes? Yeah, I don't hate it. Transform. Draw. And then I can double thirst and infernal grasp, make a huge attack. So let's say we kill Colleen. Kill a Fireblade Charger. Make them pay the ward. And then Infernal Grasp Extus. And Rebirth. We're going for glory. Alright, and our opponent takes lethal. So yeah, that was an impressive showing of Puppet Factory alongside Sedgemore Witch. So as long as we can have our three mana creatures survive, our deck is pretty busted. Getting to that point is not always easy, which is where all the discard effects come in handy. Could also make a more expensive deck, as we explained in the introduction, with a higher curve where you maybe play some counter spells to protect your creatures instead, 
and at that point you can also play Alrun's Epiphany, which has a lot of great synergy in the deck as well, getting to take an extra turn, maybe get your factory going, as well as making some 3-3 bird tokens, sounds pretty fun. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.